Hey guys, would it uh, be possible if we did a colorless goblin noise? Shut up, Gary. Gary. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Cart, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Today's game is a special one, because not only am I joined by Sed from One More Mana, but I have also got the return of Liz and Eric, who despite having run away and moved to Seattle, can't escape me. Unfortunately, I forgot to record opening hands because I'm a garbage person, but let's get into the game. I win the die roll and start us off. I play Snow-Covered Mountain and cast a Goblin Welder. Eric plays a Forest and casts a Diligent Farmhand, passing. Sed plays a Mountain and passes. Liz plays a Homeward Path and also passes. I play Snow-Covered Mountain and cast Goblin Lookout. I decide not to hit anyone as a show of solidarity with my other mono-red players, passing. Eric plays a Sun Petal Grove and passes. Sed plays a Mountain, and Eric sacrifices the farmhand to find a land. Sed then plays out a Thought Pestle and passes. Liz plays a Mountain and casts an Armillary Sphere. I play a Thornbite Staff, and pass, lamenting my missing land drop. Eric plays a Tapped Orin Reef, and then pays 3 mana for a Mentor of the Meek. Sed draws, and plays a Mountain. 3 mana also gets tapped on his turn, but he instead plays a Cloudstone Curio. Liz untaps, draws, and plays a Mountain. She then sacrifices the sphere to go and find two basics to put to hand, and passes to me. I draw, and pass. Eric plays a ghost quarter for turn, and brings out Tana. Once his commander resolves, he taps the Orin Reef to put a plus one plus one counter onto her, and he goes to combat. He hits Liz for two with the Mentor of the Meek, and passes. Said draws, and asks for tapped land count. He plays a Mountain, and then brings out Perforos, Bronze Blooded. At this point, Liz also realizes she needed to discard a card at the end of her turn, doing so before moving to her new turn. Liz plays a Mountain for turn, and feels like this isn't really a red game. She drops a Furnace of Wrath to speed things up, and passes turn. I draw, and play a Snow-Covered Mountain. I tap 3 mana to cast an Ashnod's Altar, and that's all I have, sadly passing to Eric. Eric draws for turn, and heads straight to combat. He's swinging Tana at me, and the Mentor at Liz. Liz will be taking 4 from the Mentor, and I'm looking at 6 right now because of the furnace being out. However, before damage is dealt though, Eric uses Blood Rush from a Slaughter Horn to pump Tana by plus 3 plus 2. This has me taking 12 instead, while Liz still takes 4. With the damage being dealt, Eric gets to make 12 1 1 sapling tokens from Tana's ability. In his post combat main phase, he then casts Nature's Lore and taps the Orin Reef to pump the Saprolines by giving them a plus one plus one counter before going to find his land. He grabs an overgrown tomb, untapped, taking two which I catch later on. Sed plays a mountain and looks at Eric's absurd board state. He wants more counts of the tapped lands and pays five for a mana geyser, and uses five of it for Ilharg. With seven remaining, he casts a Pyreheart Wolf. Two more of it get used for Tormenting Voice, which has said Pitching Solemn Simulacrum to draw two cards. He still has two red floating, 
and he taps a mountain for the third he needs to activate Perforos Bronze Blooded, basically getting to sneak attack out a zealous conscripts. He steals Eric's Tana as it enters. Moving to combat, he goes all out at Eric, and as Eric moves to block, putting two tokens in front of Stuff Without Trample because of the Pyro Heart, and a few in front of Ilharg, leaving Tana free and clear. However, before moving to damage, Eric does cast a Nature's Claim for one green, blowing up the Furnace of Wrath on Liz's side of the board, and gives her four life. Eric then takes the three from Tana, and loses a lot of Sapper lanes. The Pyreheart also dies, but comes back because of Undying, and Sed loses the Conscripts, and then passes turn. Liz's turn is quite quick, as many red players will find, playing a Mountain and casting a Fire Servant before passing to me. I untap and draw, finding something, but it's not a land, which you'll see as I play a Fire Diamond which comes in tapped and pass. Eric untaps with his massive Broccoli army and plays Dragon Skull Summit. He casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding a card and then drawing two. One of the cards is a Conqueror's Flail, which comes onto the board and he equips it onto Tana. Moving to combat, he swings his commander at Sed, along with her token army. Sed asks for Eric's life total, and I realize he should be too lower from the Shockland at this point. Sed decides not to block and just takes an 18 to the face, 16 of which is commander. With Tana connecting, Eric gets to make six more sapling tokens. Eric then taps the Orin Reef once his new broccolis are out, giving them all a plus one plus one counter, and he passes to Sed. Sed draws, and taps three for a Manic Vandal. It comes in, and he has the ETB trigger blow up the Conqueror's Flail, and then just sits tight, passing to Liz. Liz untaps, and draws. She drops a Mountain, and puts his stack a Fiery Confluence. She picks the mode to have each creature take one twice, and also destroys an artifact, deciding to blow up my Ashland's Altar. This all but wipes the board, and she then goes to combat, hitting Eric with the Elemental. She passes turn. I untap, and still can't draw a land to save my life, and decide to tap out for Krenko, passing. It's at this point Liz realizes she shouldn't have been able to attack, as her elemental would have been dead from the confluence, and puts it to the yard, and we give Eric back the life he lost. Eric plays a Woodland Cemetery for turn, and casts Impact Tremors. He then brings his other half of the commanders, and Ravos hits the field. This has each opponent lose one because of the tremors as his commander comes in, and with nothing else, Eric passes. Set on taps and draws. Six mana gets him a caged sun, and he names red as it enters, passing. Liz casts Neheb in her main phase, and passes. I draw, and still can't find a land. Thankfully, Mana Echoes will help a lot with my mana issues on my next turn, and I cast it, passing as it resolves. Eric untaps, and returns Mentor of the Meek to his hand with the Ravos trigger. He then plays a land, and recasts the Mentor, dealing one to his opponents with the Tremor trigger. He then brings out Tana, dealing another one to his opponents with the Tremor trigger, and goes to combat. He boops me with Ravos, and we then pass to Sed. Sed draws. He's got a good chunk of mana to play with on his turn, but he just passes through his phases, which is kind of concerning. Liz untaps and draws. She plays Sword of War and Peace, slapping it onto Neheb. She goes to combat, swinging her commander at me. I couldn't block even if I wanted to, and I take six from Neheb, and we then move to resolve the Sword of War and Peace trigger, with me losing 6 from the Sword trigger, while Liz gains 5. During her second main phase, she then gains 12 red mana, and uses all of it to cast Earthquake where X is 11. This is enough to kill me, and wipe the board for the most part, minus Ravos. Eric and Sed also take the damage with Sed dipping quite low, and she then passes to Eric. 
Eric untaps and returns Tana to his hand with the Ravos trigger on his upkeep. He recasts her, which has his impact tremors dealing one to his opponents as she enters, and he plays a clifftop retreat. Eric then taps more for Brutal Horde Chief, dealing one to his opponents again with the tremors trigger. He swings Ravos in the air at Liz, training her for one with the Horde Chief trigger, and then Ravos connects, dealing two. With nothing else, Eric passes. Seds hoping for a good top deck, but unfortunately remembers very quickly that Ilharg was there after drawing him, since he put him there earlier after the board wipe. This doesn't help him at all, really, and he taps six mana to recast the Boar God. He goes to combat, swinging Ilharg at Eric, which lets him put out a Golden Guardian tapped and attacking as well. Eric decides to take the hit from both, and before bouncing the Guardian back to his hand at the end of turn, Sed decides to activate the Guardian to fight Ilharg. It unfortunately dies against the Boar God, but this allows it to transform into a Goldforge garrison, and with nothing else, Sed passes. Liz untaps and draws, but doesn't have a clear line of attack since Eric has a black creature and Sed can make a golem token with the garrison. She puts to stack a Molten Disaster, putting four into the X. This wipes away Eric's blocker, and with the way clear, she swings Neheb at Eric, who takes the hit for 6, and then loses 2 from the sword trigger, while she gains 4. In her second main phase, she gains 15 red mana, and presses down back forward triangle for her finishing move, a lethal rolling thunder. She doesn't even need much mana for it to finish the table, winning the game. Game review time. Hmm, so I probably should have sacrificed one of my goblins earlier on, Tell Cass Cranko the turn before I did. It probably would have fast-tracked me a little bit more, and it would have meant that I'd be able to actually have used my Ashnod's Altar before Liz destroyed it. I'm glad Seb was able to join us for this game, but it certainly seemed like his deck was a little bit shy. He certainly had a powerful turn when he was able to drop Ilharg, the Zealous Conscripts, and the Pyreheart Wolf, but unfortunately after the board wipe, he really wasn't able to get back into it too much. And I think it kind of showcased how Red can struggle to draw cards late in the game. Eric's Tana and Ravos deck certainly made a lot of tokens, and I love the addition of Bloodrush in the deck. It synergizes perfectly with both of his commanders by pumping Tana, and by being a creature that Ravos can return to his hand so he can use again later on. I think Liz did a fantastic job of skirting the line between dangerous and helping her opponents out. Playing out the Furnace of Wrath when she did pushed the focus off of her since everyone wanted to be able to use it, and at the same time caused her opponents to get lower in life. I also don't falter for killing me, since it takes very little for Krenko to start going off, and having the Thornbite staff on the field and mana echoes was definitely a dangerous combo. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.